So I discovered Bitcoin about, I think it was about 2011. And that's when uh, it was from a, a fellow nerd friend of mine who introduced me to it and said, Stuart, you got to take a look at this. What, what I liked about Bitcoin was the, um, uh, the trustless nature of things and also the community. The community of, of these wild sort of like, you know, Wild West sort of people, you know, I resonated quite deeply with that. Um, that was the main sort of thing that I really liked about about Bitcoin. I didn't really see any flaws at that time. It wasn't, uh, but but now I can see that it's. Um, I think the initial the initial drive for for Bitcoin was to create a sort of dem democratic system. What I liked about Bitcoin, ideally, was that it was an alternative way for money to flow into the hands of people unlike today's banking system where money sort of like inflated it goes in via the banking system and it sort of percolates out there and it, you know and then from there it's sort of leveraged and all sorts of debt vehicles and and you know like i think was it 98 percent of the money that's in circulation now is uh is is derived from debt and uh and just through the passage of time interest is incurred on the principal. So there's not enough money, not enough fiat currency in the system to pay back the principal along with the, the, the interest associated with it. So, you know, pretty much almost any other system is better than that. <laughs> Discovering Ethereum was about 2013, wasn't it? 2014. I was part of the initial um, ICO at, in the beginning. I bought some like 2000. 2000 uh, Ethereum tokens at the time. But unfortunately, I was in Israel at the time, and as I was doing my password, um, Hamas started to bomb us. And you know, uh, in Tel Aviv, they've got this sort of Iron Dome, um, sort of missile protective, uh, you know, <laughs> as, soon as, a, as soon as a foreign body sort of comes in, uh, you know, the radars triangulate on this and then launch bombs. Uh, <laughs> I mean, missiles to intercept these, uh, these bombs. So m my wife or girlfriend at the time, we sort of ran down into the bomb, bomb shelter downstairs. I was completely stark as naked. And uh, ever since then, I've been trying to figure out that password. I thought it was something technologically interesting. Um, um, I, I like programming languages and compilers, and I thought it was a really, really interesting idea putting a, uh, a you know, a Turing complete language on, on, on the blockchain. But I'd also sort of become more familiar with uh, Meredith Patterson's work and language security. I think maybe about that same time, and uh, a, a lot of questions started, you know, getting flagged. Um, and this is when I started doing looking at the code base. And I saw the code base was 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 not good. Not I was quite unhappy with the, the quality of the code, and that's when I was like, "Well, all right, I, I won't be investing in Ethereum based on that fact." I, I tend to look at the code. So Ethereum bring, coming into the Ethereum Classic uh, community, I was into uh, the Rust programming language, and um, I'd been working on my project Fractalide, and my wife sort of you know put the put the the, the, you know, the fist on the table and said, husband, you need to go and get a job. <laughs> and I saw there was a, 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 a Igor uh, had posted a, a, job, a job posting, um, one of these job sites, and she said, look at this, you need to go for this. So I, I applied for that and I got it. And I was like, hey, this is Ethereum Classic. What, what, what's, what's the history behind this? Uh, I resonated with it. And I found, and I guess as I got into it, I found the community to be a lot more robust, a lot more interesting. Um, and diverse, and you know, there was like solid people in here. Uh, so that's what sort of stuck me to it. After looking at at this community and 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 sort of actually going through that investment um, uh, thesis that Matt uh, wrote up, he he illustrated four different points. Uh, you know, there's the initial adoption stage, then there's the miners come on, and then the third, third stage is when developers start to come on. And I saw that, and I thought actually this is a pretty good trajectory trajectory to follow. Um, Let's get in there first. Let's be one of the first people. If there's risk associated with it, but you know, maybe the, maybe it could work out because there's there's it's a very diverse community. It's just not it's not just your hackers and nerds. You've got all sorts of people in there. So I thought there might be a, a, a critical mass to be able to support this sort of thing. Anyway, I already spent two and a half years working on this project. Um, with the intention of actually implementing my own cryptocurrency with Fractalide. And 
having the, had the experience of back in 2001, I know how difficult it is to build a community around one of these things. So I'd already become sort of well known within the Ethereum Classic community. I thought, well, why not just sort of join forces with this sort of, with this, with this community? And that way I don't need to build a large community associated with it. From a very high level perspective, Fractalite is trying to solve, the, well, the problem of, of um, uh, moving a cryptocurrency from a speculative currency to a utilitarian currency in the sense that in the sense that now we start to attract people with real skills into a community and they are able to produce uh, intellectual property and they're able to charge money for it uh, if they so wish um, and then from there they're actually solving problems within industry so instead of instead of a, a cryptocurrency which is sort of sitting there making big promises um, and you get a bunch of speculators coming in there, you're actually getting people coming in there who have existing clients who have you know problems associated with with industry whether it be oh you know healthcare any, any sort of thing that requires um, convenient and cheap and quick payment mechanisms the main sort of target of fractalide this is still a touchy-feely thing at the moment I'm still exploring it um, as mentioned in my talk yesterday, there are sort of different you know, ways human beings organize their organizations. Um, one particular sort of group of people are those people that are already involved in cryptocurrency. They have already, maybe they might have small teams, maybe they're creating uh, products themselves. Um, but essentially you're looking at a, a certain uh, group of people that, that have, well, you could say the power of a bank in their back pocket. This enables a whole different—it's a different ball game. Um, so, so how does one how does one sort of create an infrastructure for these people so that they're able to specialize in in, in a particular co component or solving a particular problem, and then allowing each of these entities to 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 communicate information with each other? So you can see a marketplace is, as just a, a set of nodes and edges uh, where the where the edges of the trading. You know they're trading uh, money and and goods. Um, how does how does one sort of break that up even more to the point where you can have these individuals who who are wielding the power of a bank, an entire bank, um, in their pockets, such that they're able to compose entities which which solve one specific problem, and that becomes their niche. Um, and yet at the same time that particular problem or the solution that they've got for that problem composes with any everything else in 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 the network so it's 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 sort of shifting um well just because of the nature of how we we um architect the software using this flow based programming concept um we'll be able to um we'll be able to uh, uh bring together a, a community at large but yet retain these sort of nucleus uh, teams. Fractalide would probably be best solving problems in the sense that where you have domain experts, mm -hmm. domain experts who might be scientists, mathematicians, um, engineers who aren't famili familiar with programming languages. So what Fractalide does is it sort of separates concerns. So you can have your programmers mm -hmm. who revel in programming languages and they can, they can write highly optimized, complicated, components which do one thing but that wraps up into a nice component when on the graph level you'd have your domain experts and domain experts would uh, it's it's it, uh, on the graph level it's just basically uh, nodes and edges and you you sort of plug nodes together you much like lego you could say so i would say from that perspective domain experts would prefer to be on the graph level um, and many other programming languages don't have this abstraction level. So, so in that sense, you're actually reducing the bar uh, for no, the normal person, the domain expert, to enter this, 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 this domain and actually have control over how they want their application to be constructed. And I think that's quite suitable for the cryptocurrency community because you know you've got a you've got a, a subset of uh, programmers, but there's also a large amount of people who would like to create different applications, um, but might not ne not necessarily have the technical know-how to do that. So this is where I see the the main body of users coming in. So what what I would what I would dearly like to see is um, 
um, a, an environment, or okay, say three to five years from now, uh, a large amount of programmers would be already on the system, have created a, a large amount of uh, uh, agents which are solving problems and they're completely reusable, reusable and reproducible. So um, other, age, uh, other programmers would come on and say, well, you know, I've got, a, I've got clients that I need to make happy and I see there's a whole toolbox of uh, agents ready to go. I don't have to write those things. They've already been debugged and, 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 and used in, in, uh, in industry as it is, so they just pull them in and use them. Um, but also supporting a lot more uh, cryptocurrencies. So you'd have all, you know, all sorts of different cryptocurrencies that each of these agents could plug into.